Morning everyone, welcome to Ainsley News. It's Monday the 24th of January. Today we're talking slow growth and lower inflation. On Friday we talked to the misconception that gold goes down when rates go up. Indeed the opposite is the case. Part of this is the reality of market behaviour after a recession. Friday night dished up another salient reminder of how easy these money markets are taking to just the threat of tighter policy with another sea of red across all markets except precious metals. Late last year we assured Rail Powell's views that we're about to see slow growth, inflation quickly revert and the Fed yet caught out, tightening too late and too far and ultimately reversing. Late last week Morgan Stanley's US Chief Equity Strategist Michael Wilson who has been predicting what he calls the fire and ice scenario for some time had this to say as we enter the ice scenario. This from him. The good news is that markets have been digesting this tightening for months, despite the fact that the major US large cap equity indices are down only 5-10% to 10 from their highs. The damage under the surface has been enormous and even catastrophic for many individual stocks. Expensive, unprofitable names, i.e. the most speculative parts of the equity market, market have been hit the hardest, down 30-50%. to 50%. This is appropriate now in our view, not just because the Fed is pivoting, but because these kinds of valuations don't make any sense in any investment environment. In short, the froth is coming out of an equity market that simply got too extended on valuation. But attention should now turn to the ice part of our narrative, slowing growth. As we've been writing for months, we view the current deceleration in growth as more about the natural ebbing of the cycle than the latest variant of COVID. Indeed, there are reasons to be optimistic that Omicron will pr prove to be the final wave of this pandemic. However, that also means the end of extraordinary stimulus, both monetary and fiscal. It also means looser supply chains as restrictions ease and people finally return to a normalized workplace. Better supply is good for fighting inflation, but may also reveal the degree to which demand has been supported and overstated by double ordering. Weaker PMIs are already leading the stocks in this regard. In Powell's latest In Focus for Macro Insiders, he again points out that this is a well-trodden road that the market seems to forget each time. You can see in his chart that he shows today, below of the 10-year uh, yields since 1982, after its recession, we saw a rise in rates that didn't stick, followed by new yield lows. You can also see it in the ISM, which is a proxy for GDP growth. Growth slows rapidly after the initial recovery and only gets real traction later in the cycle. Powell then goes on to share a number of charts indicating that growth has started to slow and is about to accelerate down. With respect to his paid subscribers, the following that we share is one that highlights most. The ECRI is the Respected Economic Cycle Research Institute's index that identifies turning points in the economic cycle and the ISM Manufacturing Index, also known as the Purchasing Managers Index, PMI a monthly indicator of US economic activity based on a survey of purchasing managers at more than 300 manufacturing firms. Both are dipping sharply. So that's growth. What about inflation? Whilst acknowledging that huge CPI print re reported on last week, he goes on to state, but if this is driven by supply issues, then it should slow as growth slows and the global economy reopens. The ECRI suggests the peak in inflation is in and that it will fall fast. ECRI has CPI at 2% this year. That takes the Fed entirely out of the equation, most likely by the summer. Powell is laying out the framework for a volatile year ahead, but one where the Fed will predictably tighten too hard too late and then later be forced to reverse after doing so into a slowing economy and inflationary environment, suggesting you buy gold. As such, a long consideration or consolidation tends to lead to fast advances. Gold loves slow growth and slow inflation. You will note this is, in the initial stages, the opposite of Julian Brigden's thesis we talked about. And herein lies two salient points. With due respect, no one knows exactly what will play out. Evidenced by two industry stalwarts at, oh, at odds, these are truly unprecedented times. I don't know, we've said that a lot. Testing all the theory and, by definition, historic precedent. However, on each scenario, both stress the need for gold and silver in portfolio, and these are expert macroeconomic analysts, and not gold bugs. This is because gold thrives in the abnormal, and does little in normal economic conditions. There are three broad scenarios before us right now. Brigden's, Powell's, and normal. We'd suggest normal was left behind after the wake, as far back as the GFC, and has been craftily hidden 
with monetary stimulus, and the unavoidable repercussions are our immediate future. Whether it's Brigden's growth and strong inflation, or Powell's low, low growth and low inflation, both result in an abrupt reversal by the Fed, negative real rates, and a flat to negative yield curve flagging the trouble ahead. And that's gold's sweet spot. And silver's too. Well, thanks for joining us again for news today. Jump over to ainsleybullion.com.au for all things physical and also our news. You can reread this today or check out any of the charts we have accompanying it. ainsleywealth.com.au if you're looking to buy the dip, that's the place to go. BTC, what a bargain at the moment if you're into crypto. And goldsilverstandard.com. That's our own cryptocurrency that's built and backed by real gold and real silver. A true stable coin. If you'd been in that at the moment, you'd be laughing all the way to the bank. Enjoy your Monday, everyone. We'll catch you tomorrow for more news. <music>